My name is Mohamed Bukar, a professor of obstetrics and gynecology with University of Medigree, and a honorary consultant of obstetrician and gynecologist with University of Medigree Teaching Hospital. The title of my lecture is Ultrasound Appearances of Ovarian Mature Cystic Teratoma, otherwise called Damoid Cysts. After the introduction, we look at ultrasound images of 19 cases of ovarian mature cystic teratoma and round up with some take home messages. The learning objectives for this lecture is to appreciate the varied appearances of ovarian mature cystic teratoma as seen on ultrasound scan. All images for this presentation were of patients managed in two hospitals in Medigree, the capital of Borno State. Mature cystic teratomas, as we are all aware, are benign ovarian neoplasms which arise from unfertilized oocytes. They are composed of adult der derivatives from two or three embryonic layers. That means they have different combinations of mature ectodermal, mesodermal, and endodermal tissue. They are the commonest ovarian neoplasms. Mature cystic teratomas account for more than 50% of neoplasms diagnosed in women younger than 20 years. They are bilateral in 10 to 15% of cases. Most times they are diagnosed incidentally when patients are evaluated for other conditions. Most can actually manage expectantly especially if the cyst is less than six centimeters. But the cyst may recall if it is incompletely excised during surgery. Most damaged cysts are easy to recognize on grade scale ultrasound because of presence of fat and hair, and these tissues appear as echogenic areas within or around the cysts. And that is why I hardly make a diagnosis of damaged cysts without seeing an echogenic component in or around the cysts. There is usually no color flow on low velocity, low filter with appropriate Doppler settings. Except in a few cases of immature teratoma and stroma ovary, although recent literature has shown that a few cases of dermoid may have solid components, and these solid components actually take up color. When a mass is felt on clinical examination and is not seen on ultrasound scan, and what is sure that a mass was felt in all probability when it's dealing with a mature cystic teratoma. It's not seen because of the extensive shadowing. In the 19 cases or images we are going to, to look at, the median age was 30, the youngest was 10, and the only postmenopausal woman was 54 years old. Three or the patients were premenarchal girls. In the literature, especially coming from the Western world, this shows that majority are incidental findings. But among these 19 cases, 74% were 
presented with one form of pen or the other. These images that we're going to review, more than half have histological diagnosis. This paper published in the World Journal in 2016 validated the IOTA simple descriptors and the simple rules for calcifying and nasal masses. So what we are going to look at today, Marshall C. Stratoma has also has been validated as part of the simple descriptors. <laughs> And benign simple descriptive for all in regular cysts with regular inner walls less than 10 centimeters. So, for the purpose of this lecture, this is what we are going to look at benign cyst teratoma, which is one of the simple descriptors. Then I simply describe two unilocular cysts. This is a unilocular cyst with mixed echogenicity. This is mixed echogenicity, hypoechoic, hyperechoic. So mixed echogenicity and acoustic shadows. This is acoustic shadow behind the rectus nodule in the premenopausal woman. This was a premenopausal woman. So this is suggestive of benign cystic teratoma. So this is just one feature. We will see the other features of mature cystic teratomas. This paper, again published in the White Journal, March 2022, titled Imaging in Gynecological Disease, Clinical and Ultrasound Characteristics of Ovarian Mature Cystic Teratomas. They look at the already established appearances of mature cystic teratoma, and also came up with new descriptions of mature cystic teratoma. As we can see, the commonest in 73% of cases from this large IOTA study were bright dots and O lines, followed by echogenic white ball, and you have fat field level. They could assess tip of the eyes back sign. And these were the newly discovered features. Cotton wool tufts, mushroom capsine, completely hyperechogenic lesion, and starry sky sign. So let's start with the commonest. Bright dots and O lines. So you see bright dots and O lines. Now this is uh, fetal head, as you can all see. This is a uh, amniotic fluid. So we can see these bright lines and dots on the fetal head. And I believe that no one is in doubt that this is fetal hair. So we see bright lines and dots in an adnasal lesion, we shouldn't doubt that what we are seeing is here, and that is dermoid, and is the commonest ultrasound appearance of mature cystic teratoma. This 11 year old girl, look at this multilocular dermoid. You can see different three locules, bright lines and dots, bright lines and dots. Same patient on follow up. You can see the ovarian tissue here. You can see ovarian follicles here. This suggests that uh, surgery, you can leave a good chunk of ovarian tissue. And you can see the plane of this is easy to tease out. As you can see here, it's also easy to tease out. And look at the hair and fat. Look at the hair, bright lines and dots enmeshed in fat. Look at this. Here, a mesh in fat. So bright lines and dots. This was a 28 year old who was pregnant at the time of this ultrasound scan. Look at the bright dots. 
here suggestive of the moist of course it was confirmed histologically again this is a 29 year old virgin presented with long-standing history of abdominal pain look at the bilaterality is bilateral in about 10 to 15 percent of cases bright lines and dot you can see the hair tufts and look at this fat ball that was seen here in a different sack so to speak and these are the specimens at surgery this was a 23 year old who complained of lower abdominal pain which became severe you can see bright lines and dots the increasing severity may suggest torsion this patient 32 year old also presented with lower abdominal pain you can see the bladder bright lines and dots and look at this hyper ecogenic areas when on transverse session it appears like completely hyper ecogenic look at the uterus here and uh, look at the abnormal position of the cyst sitting in the uterus vesicle patch this abnormal position could suggest torsion and that could explain the pain the patient presented with again here you can see this mixed echogenicity we can see this white ball with bright lines and dots the same thing here on trans abdominal ultrasound scan this 30 year old presented at 25 weeks of gestation uh, has some difficulties making a diagnosis of dermoid here but when i saw this echogenic area here of course it narrowed my diagnosis to dermoid rather than endometrioma because this is looking like uh, ground glass appearance here you can see placenta the mammetrium and look at these dense adhesions and at surgery look at this cysts this is the fundus of the uterus and look at the dense adhesions here in fact it was discovered to be an infected dermoid cysts this was a 17 year old then in secondary school this was a trans rectal ultrasound scan you can see the bright lines and dots and moderate adhesions were discovered at surgery again you can see these bright lines and dots bright lines and dots the bright lines and dots representing hair tufts again this 34 year all presented with lower abdominal pain you can see bright line and dots within the cysts here you can see bright dots and lines appearing like a ring within the substance of the ovary the ovary was of normal size so a surgery on bisecting the ovary you can see this dermoid that was seen as bright ring within the substance of the ovary this patient was seen when she was pregnant he represented two years after the first consultation with lower abdominal pain you know a 10 year old who was admitted in the pediatric ward because of acute abdomen she was free of the phone for one month and this, she was deferred to us and this was already discovered this local assist with these bright lines and dots and in fact some of these areas uh, appearing to me like the newly dis described cotton wool tufts here you can see the asymmetric wall thickening asymmetric wall thickening is a feature of chronic torsion and that was what was discovered at surgery and that was what was responsible for the acute abdomen you can see the specimen at surgery now looking at the rokitansky nodule or what is commonly called the dermoid plug this was a 40 year old who presented with acute lower abdominal pain you can see the rokitansky nodule you can see uh, the fat ball here 
bisa reverberation artifacts at surgery few days later the ovary was discovered to be gangrenous from ovarian torsion this was this same patient who was seen while she was pregnant presented two years after and you can see the growth of the dermoid the literature has it that dermoid is very slow growing it grows by between one to two millimeters per year but in this case within two years you can see the growth is not in millimeters but in centimeters this echogenic ball was actually within its own capsule you can see that it's within its own capsule and this was the lesion at laparotomy and this was the one that i bisected the ovary earlier on so this is also bilateral again you can see the dermoid clock or rocketansky nodule here casting acoustic shadowing some may cast some may not cast acoustic shadowing some are fixed to the cis wall others are mobile again you can see this rocketansky nodule in this patient i showed earlier and you can see at the surgery so let's look at the fat fluid uh, level here you can see fat fluid level usually a straight line between the hyperechoic and the less echogenic lead content you can see this straight line but here you can see the fat globule taking a different curvature because it's freely moves within the cysts and at surgery look at this thick wall cyst here and look at the thick wall cyst look at the fat globule that is freely mobile within the cyst and this so the cyst at surgery now here you can see what we thought was another cyst with a fat fluid level uh, you can see it here also and you can see some additions between the lesion and the ovary at surgery we discovered that this particular cyst that we, we thought was an end was a dermoid cyst was actually a packet of pus it was already found at surgery and this was confirmed by histopathology you can see the typical fat fluid description straight line separating the hyperechoic with the hypoechoic cyst content two of the eyes back sign the new study did not consider this because they said that the literature does not have adequate information on the proper classification or definition of the tip of eye back sign but to me it's a tip of the eye back sign i think it's tip of the eye back sign is straightforward so you only see the tip of the lesion but you won't see anything that is below the lesion because of extensive shadowing here you can see this tip of the iceberg sign this was a 40 year old whose life about was two years presented with lower adrenal pain and uh, look at this tip of the iceberg and beyond here you can't see anything why because of the extensive shadowing again this case that we had seen before look at this area so this is the tip of the iceberg and beyond here you can't see anything because of extensive shadowing this we saw this case earlier on when we were looking at bright lines and dots but this time around where our, our focus is on the tip of the iceberg sign so this tip of the iceberg sign here this is the tip of the iceberg sign beyond here you can't see anything all you see is shadowing again the 17 year old girl with these bright lines and dots here you can see these bright lines and dots beyond that you see extensive shadowing so to me honestly uh, tip of the iceberg sign is um easy to pick although the definition may not be universally acceptable or applied <laughs> One night it ain't teacher and a one number ten teacher and a teacher of one karate. This is one of the newly described characteristics 
of mature cystic diatoma. The cotton wool tufts. In this 45 year old patients with fibroids with an incidental finding of what I suspect to be dermoid cysts. Now, before the description of the cotton wool sign, this would pass for bright lines and dot. But the new description is that cotton wool tufts are poorly demarcated hyperechogenic lesions within the cyst content. Here you can see these lesions are poorly demarcated within the lesion here, although not within the cyst, but within the lesion here. So this may go for the cotton wool tufts recently described. Again, this looks to me again more like the new described feature of cotton wool tough rather than the my plug because you can see these ones are multiple of they are floating and of course they also cast across each other but you can see they are also irregular appearing more like cotton wool tough rather than damoid ball or damoid plug completely hypergogenic is another new appear and just described and we had this postmenopausal woman actually with this feature she was the only postmenopausal woman among the 19 images and you can see the completely hypergogenic filling up the whole cysts and this was confirmed histologically study sky sign is also another new description here you can see this content looks like starry sky this here looks like starry sky uh, this also looks like starry sky this also looks like starry sky and this also looks like starry sky especially if the gain is reduced here but this description in that paper was presence of hyperechogenic particulate matter floating within an unechoic cyst and none of these three that i've shown are unechoic so this does not typically fit the new description of starry sky but if you remove the unequoic they are all starry sky appearances this has not been described either in the old or the new Characteristics of mature cystic teratoma. But the literature has it that when this form of lesion, what is called dermoid ball, is seen in an adnesal lesion, it is almost patognomonic of mature cystic teratoma. It is typically described as chocolate truffle because look at the appearance, just like chocolate truffles. Although this has not been described, this is almost patognomonic of mature cystic teratoma, although it's a rare finding. Multiple features are common because remember they are derivatives from two or more mature cell layers. So the appearances are usually multiple rather than single. Now let's look at this uh, 40 year old. Whose last child was two, two years ago, presented with a lower abdominal pain of two years. She presented two years earlier, but she was told that the mass was small, so there was no problem. Two years after, she presented with this huge mass. With this age and the rapid growth, one should consider malignant transformation. In 80% of cases, it may turn out to be, if it's malignant, it will turn out to be squamous cell carcinoma. So let's look at the different features. Here you can see, already you can see the fat balls here with acoustic shadowing, tip of the iceberg. 
time, you can see bright lines here and dot. And uh, you can see what looks like the starry sky appearance, but the starry sky appearance is described in an anechoic region, and this is not anechoic. You can see this floating hyperechoic echoes. Again, you can see bright lines and dots. Here, casting acoustic shadow. So, miss echogenicity, bright lines and dots, acoustic shadowing. So, multiple features. So, let's look at a few pitfalls. At times, the ultrasound features of hemorrhagic cysts, dermoid cysts, and the endometrioma may overlap. When you have such a situation, the best one can do is to describe the size, the appearance, color score, and give likely differential diagnosis rather than absolute diagnosis. There was a patient I shot earlier who I almost passed it for an endometrioma, but when I saw this floating echogenic lesion, I said, no, this is most probably a dermoid cyst. But I didn't pick the fact that it was an infected dermoid. But after surgery, look at the cyst. The cyst ruptured and the content was pus. So when I went back, I reviewed the, the images. I realized that, yes, this is not the typical dermoid. You can see what the literature described as lazy appearance of what? Of pus. So retrospectively, I appreciated what, what the literature described as lazy appearance of pus as compared to bright lines and dots of dermoid cysts. This was a case of endometrioma. Severe adhesions were encountered at surgery. This echogenic area should not be mistaken for a dermoid because somewhere else here you can see what looks like bright dots and lines. So this could be confused for a dermoid, but this is actually an endometrioma with sludge. This 27 year old virgin presented with lower abdominal pain. I was not very sure, and I'm still not very sure what the diagnosis is because she was lost to follow up. You can see what looks like hemorrhagic cysts with receding clot here. But here again, you can see a septum. Hemorrhagic cysts are almost always unilocular. So here again, you can see this, of course, this shadowing is not actually from, coming from here. The same thing, this shadowing looks like critical angle, angle shadowing and not coming from the substance of the lesion. So as the patient to come back for follow-up, but she defaulted. So it's difficult for me to now conclude whether this is a dermoid cyst or a hemorrhagic cyst. But hemorrhagic cyst is unlikely because this is multilocular and hemorrhagic cysts are usually unilocular cysts. Again, this was a hematoma within a serous cyst adenoma. So this should not be confused for a dermoid. Looking at the changing pattern of, of hemorrhagic cysts, this 29 year old presented at 13 weeks with, with twin conception, twin pregnancy, spontaneously conceived, and she developed ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So at presentation, look at the hemorrhages within the thickal uterus cyst. Two weeks later, Look at the changing pattern. You can see the tertiary clot, the diminution in size of the hemorrhagic cyst. So this is changing pattern of hemorrhagic cyst. So if there is any doubt, like in the previous previous case, follow the patients. If the cyst regresses, then it's unlikely to be dermoid. If it persists, if it regresses, it's likely to be hemorrhagic cyst. But if it persists, then it's likely to be the dermoid or any other lesion we're not suspecting. Now, this was a 21 year old nodigravida, a single president with three weeks history of abdominal pain, abdominal swelling, and three months history of abdominal pain. This is a solid lesion. Dermoid is not a solid lesion. This is a solid lesion. Look at the color. Dermoid does not take off. 
color, except in a very few cases. Look at the solid nature of the mass at laboratory. Look at the solid nature of the mass. This was immature teratoma, not mature cystic teratoma. Here you can see this was a 42-year-old parasix, present what we suspect was a premature ovarian insufficiency. Now look at these bright lines and dots. And here, look at the tip of the iceberg. You can see here with extensive shadowing. Is this a dermoid? No, it is not. This is bowel. This is one of the greatest pitfalls. Bowel can actually mimic the typical presentation of dermoid, which is bright lines and or dots. If you are in doubt, wait for a while and you will see the peristalsis. And that will convince, convince one that one is dealing with a bowel, not a lesion. So here again is a video that we have seen earlier of mature CC teratoma. You can see the uterus here. You can see the multilocular cysts. You can see bands of adhesions. You can see sitting on the fundus of the uterus. And uh, you can see the multiple rocketanski nodules casting acoustic shadows. You can see bright lines and dots. So this is classic of mature cystic teratoma. And here is a video of immature teratoma. This is the bladder. Look at the solid nature of the lesion. Solid appearance. Two more necrosis here. So, look at the classic difference between mature and immature teratoma. So, I take a message is that dermoid cysts have typical ultrasound appearance, especially echogenic areas with shadowing. Generally, there are three structures that give shadowing in the anexa one dermoid, two fibroma, and three cysts, adenofibroma. One of the differential diagnoses of dermoid is hemorrhagic cysts. But hemorrhagic cysts are usually almost always unilocular and they undergo temporal changes from clot formation to lysis to retraction to resolution. Such that when you follow up these patients, you'll be able to rule out hemorrhagic cysts. So thank you very much for listening. Catalan, <laughs> <laughs>